Today on the Tiger Football Report, we'll preview the Tigers game against the Dartmouth College Big Green. Get ready, Tiger fans. The Tiger Football Report starts now. And here we have 1893 from the makers of Pepsi-Cola. I'm gonna swirl it, I'm gonna smell it. I'm just gonna take one small sip. <sighs> Kinda seemed like more than a sip. Yeah, let me show you. <sighs> Refined. 1893, made with cola nut extract and real sugar. Boldly blended colas. For an athlete, there's nothing scarier than a torn ACL. Athletes trust us with their care and their careers because we're a recognized leader in sports medicine. Get back to your active life sooner with MedStar Sports Medicine. White Market's ice cream plant is based in Sunbury, Pennsylvania and locally owned and operated. We've been making our ice cream for nearly 50 years. We create roughly 70 flavors of ice cream right now. We use local ingredients, especially our cream, which is from our milk plant. The cream is what gives our, our ice cream a rich and creamy texture. Now together with our customers, uh, we've created a, a product called peanut butter indulgence, which will be coming out this summer. It's a peanut butter ice cream with sea salt caramel swirl, and chocolate covered pretzel. How could you go wrong with that? Personally, I love our ice cream. You come to our house at any given time, you'll find at least five packets of ice cream in our freezer. Uh, our kids grew up eating wise quality ice cream and now we get to treat our grandchildren to it. It's been a pleasure for me to be tasting ice cream for over 40 years for Wise Markets and uh, I'm loving every minute of it. Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Tiger Football Report. I'm your host, Bill Marikas. The Tigers will hit the road headed to Hanover, New Hampshire for the first time ever to take on Dartmouth College. As always, the head coach of the Tigers, Rob Ambrose, is with me. And Coach, kind of odd that here we are, you're about to play your sixth game of the year and you're going out of conference after playing three straight conference games. Is that something you like, dislike, or really don't care, just next game up? You would like to say that it would be a relief from CAA play, that, you know, every week in the CAA is like a, you know, 15-round prize fight. But considering who we're playing, you're talking about a team that finished in the top 25 last year. That's one of the perennial Ivy League top teams, coached by a Hall of Fame coach with great players. <laughs> so it doesn't matter, man. Just it's just another team. When you were here as an assistant, Towson played Yale. Towson played Columbia. So we're moving back to the Ivy League for the first time in a while. Uh, is that something you think? I mean, I would think that the university would like us to play an Ivy League school because it adds some prestige. I suppose that there's some philosophy in that somewhere. I. I don't know how this one got scheduled. I find it kind of neat. Actually, Dartmouth was the first admission letter I ever received as a high school senior, so, and I've never been there. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, a long time, you could say that the academic cachet that goes along with it is a big deal, but to be honest, as the years have passed, while they don't play, they've chosen not to play in the FCS playoffs, there's really, really good football teams, really, really good football players. And uh, well, this is just going to be another one. You might as well just call it a conference game. They're coming off a loss to Yale, but if, if you look at them, they've got uh, a running back in Miles Smith who's averaging 7.4 yards per carry so far this season. Three guys averaging over 50 yards a game. So they, they spread the wealth, but they're running the ball very effectively. Well, Coach Stevens is a former quarterback, but any good quarterback will tell you that if you want to throw the ball well, you need to run the ball well. And the more you run it, the more open they're going to be when you throw it. So. Evidently, from the history of, history of what I found with these guys, um, they've always had talented skill players, always. And uh, we're going to have our hands full once again. Well, since he's a former quarterback, he's also got eight receivers that are averaging over 10 yards a, a catch. You don't see that very often, eight guys averaging over 10 yards a catch. I think the word, uh, the phrase is offensive juggernaut, perhaps. And no, I mean, they got great skill. And, and you can't lock on to any one guy 
because they'll spread the ball around. And, he, and they use all 11 players, and to be honest, they use way more than that, multiple sets. And they're, they're running guys in and out all the time. So just going to have to be good, solid, disciplined defense. They went 10-1 and one last year, but they lost, they lost a lot of starters from last year's team, and then they basically they've reloaded. Again, they'll come in 2-2. Two and two, But uh, this is a team that was picked to finish near the top of the Ivy League. They're coming off a loss, so they're not going to be happy when Towson comes to Dartmouth on Saturday afternoon. Your team is also coming off a disappointing loss. Um, you've had a lot of success with your teams on the road. Anything you can put your finger on? Well, in the, in the past, you know, I guess in 11, 12, and 13, um, when we're on the road, it's just us. There are no distractions. And, you know, Towson's a great school. It's a fun school. There's lots to do all the time at all hours of the day. And that's not really conducive to a restful, good night's sleep the night before a game. So our ability to travel on the road, stay in hotels, and be in places that are qu quiet and we can be focused on the job at hand is really, I think at one time we ran... 15 in a row on the road. So, uh, and to, you know, you said this is game what, six? Yep. Yeah, we've only played two home games. Right. So we're used to being on the road. That's just kind of what we do. And a different place to go this time around as, as we'll head to Dartmouth. Um, your lat, we talked about it on the previous show this week. Your running backs, Shane Simpson and uh, Deshaun Wethington, both having big games. Somebody we didn't talk about who also had a big game on Saturday for the first time, and, and I know it's a guy you're very high on, Sam Gallahan, wide receiver. He had seven catches on Saturday. Is it just a matter of Ellis getting comfortable with people that are not Christian Summers or Andre Dessenberg? <laughs> well, as, as Ellis progresses, we open up the playbook a little bit more for his understanding, and Sam ended up being the next guy. Sam, we've been planning on Sam being an integral part of the offense for years. But he's struggled through injury. He, you know, he struggled as a, as a redshirt freshman, picking up the schemes and, and being physical enough to play in this conference. And now he's figured out how to do that with his body, but he's recovered from an ankle injury that, that happened in the spring. And uh, he's now really starting to get his feet underneath him, no pun intended. And it was fun to watch him play. He's getting better and better every week. Another player that came from out of nowhere, I guess, since he wasn't on the roster until about a week before the season started, Aiden O'Neill, your place kicker, <laughs> he's been perfect, except oh. for the 52-yarder, but which was probably long enough. It was, it was. No, he's um, he is the prime example of we as coaches, we never stop working and we never stop recruiting. That we've known about this guy from when he was in high school and uh, things didn't work out where he was, and it was the perfect storm on the positive for us. And the great thing is, while we're enjoying what he does in the football world, he loves it here. He loves Towson. He loves the people. And this has really become a great fit, a great marriage. Well, hopefully his good play will continue. The Tigers will face off with Dartmouth on Memorial Field Saturday, October 15th, with kickoff scheduled for 1.30. I'll have the call along with Hall of Fame coach Gordy Combs on CBS Sports Radio 1300 and TowsonTigers.com at 1.15. As we always do, I throw a former player that mm. the Coach Ambrose has coached as an assistant or a head coach. And this time we're going to go to a guy who spent his – First three years here, basically holding a clipboard, and then became one of the had one of the greatest passing seasons in the history <laughs> of easy. NCAA football. That's easy. Joe Lee. Joe when Lee. I say Joe Lee, quarterback, what do you think? Mm. And I can't help but smile. I have probably some of the greatest football memories of my coaching career working with him, and the, the story of him and how he got to be as good as he did. Uh, he got recruited by Kirk Beathard. I'll never forget this. And Kurt brought him to me and he said, what do you think? He's, he's good enough to be on the scout team. He's a great kid, gets good grades. I like him a lot. He's a competitor. And he, Joe threw a little bit like a girl. I mean, and there's, there's a bio, biomechanical, you know, the girls that don't play sports. And my daughter does that. And uh, he pushed the ball a little bit, wasn't really that strong. But he wore the headset. He heard everything I said in a game for four years. Played behind Kevin Smith and was a great student of the game. And the funny thing is when he started playing, because he had had the headset on for so long, when we, did, we didn't even have to finish sentences. He knew what I was thinking. He knew what I was thinking before I even said it. And it, it, I've, very, I've had some great quarterbacks. Had opportunity to go great kids with great success. Some are still playing in the NFL. But he is one of the few guys that I had that kind of relationship where we could just look at each other 
and he knew what I was thinking. And he was a great competitor, a great leader, and tough as nails. And he knew what you were thinking 567 times, which is what he threw for that year in 10 games. <laughs> that will do it for us on the Tiger Football Report. For head coach Rob Ambrose, I'm Spiro Marikas. Talk with you again soon, and as always, go Tigers.